And uh, the discussion, yeah, the, all the details, uh, then Natalia will, will present uh, the participants and the panelists and the discussion uh, and the structure of the discussion. Um, and I think we are good to start. I will switch to Ukrainian. Good afternoon, everybody. We are going to continue with the second part of our agenda. We have had a presentation in the morning, then you have had a chance to attend uh, the locations, uh, and now it is time for a discussion with the architects uh, who have been active for the last uh, decades uh, in Kiev and who have been shaping the architectural image of this city. In the context of the conference, the discussion is will be designed uh, to bring us closer to what is currently going on in Kiev on one hand and on the other hand uh, we will try to uh, have a, a perspective uh, of the process starting from 1980s and um, until today we will try to explore this continuity during the discussion we will look uh, at uh, the several project trajectories of various architectural practices against the background of uh, individual trajectories of the architects who are present today and then we will try to find out uh, how the uh, integral postmodern uh, context uh, started disintegrating what were the reasons for such a disintegration and uh, in the meantime we understand that over the last decades we have been analyzing rather formal aspect uh, of the architecture we are trying to understand and realize the building as buildings as such and we rarely look at the reasons behind the construction of such buildings. Uh, so today we would want to switch uh, the focus uh, from architecture as result towards architecture as a process. If we look uh, at uh, the architecture of 1980s, uh, it is uh, quite different uh, from other periods of the 20th century. We can say that the architecture of 1980s uh, can be characterized by both internal national trends uh, and uh, some trends which were brought uh, about uh, from outside. Today we have a chance uh, to have a discussion with people who have been engaged uh, into these uh, processes. So I'm very pleased to introduce Volodymyr Shevchenko, who was part of the of Kiev uh, Construction Bureau at the time we are exploring today. Today, during the excursion, uh, Alexander mentioned uh, that uh, Volodymyr is the uh, author of the uh, housing uh, project uh, on uh, Nabirzhna Luhova Street. Anton Alinik is a co-founder of the Construction Bureau, a tutor in the Kharkiv School of uh, Architecture. In the presentation this morning, Alexander mentioned uh, the uh, Rybalsky residential block uh, so you can uh, imagine what our second panelist uh, is uh, doing with uh, in the framework of his professional activities and uh, our third panelist uh, Dmitro Antoniuk uh, also co-founder of a construction uh, academy tutor and uh, um, if I'm not mistaken Mr. Dmitro graduated uh, from 
the academy where, where he uh, currently teaches. So it's something that we can also discuss today. So we suggest uh, uh, to organize uh, our work in the following manner. So the first part will be uh, dedicated into uh, thematic narratives, uh, which are practice, context, and community. Context and community, and uh, based on this uh, three very vast concepts, uh, we can build up our discussion. So basically, let us now move towards practice. Speaking of your personal practices, what do you think makes them different from practices of other professionals? Uh, what were they influenced by? What are the competences uh, they are drawn upon? I would kindly ask to Mr. Volodymyr and Mr. Anton uh, to make references uh, to uh, architectural objects uh, which are already known to the audience. And Mr. Dmitro, you could maybe make references uh, to your teaching activities. With last microphone. So thank you for giving me the honor to start over this discussion. Um, dear audience, I'm, I uh, beg your pardon, uh, I speak not very well both Ukrainian and uh, Russian, but Russian is slightly better, so I'll continue in Russian if I may. As uh, the moderator said, uh, we started uh, our professional activities many years ago under a completely different regime. Um, it was a very particular and peculiar uh, era. There were some characteristics uh, which could be hardly explained uh, to the modern generation of uh, architectures, architects. Um, there were both uh, advantages and uh, disadvantages. Um, the salaries were all the same regardless of your uh, scope of um, work, uh, regardless of one's uh, workload. Uh, uh, salary growth was very slow and uh, very much predictable, and the salaries were all the same for uh, various architects, uh, those who were really gifted and were doing uh, some meaningful things, and tho those who were just uh, coming to the bureau to earn money. For example, uh, there was uh, an architect, and I was honored to be part of his uh, team, who was uh, the one to uh, develop the residential uh, block uh, in Padil, one of the first residential blocks uh, built under uh, at that time. As to me, I was uh, always uh, interested in setting up goals uh, for myself, sort of ar overarching goals. So when I was younger, I participated in multiple seminars, uh, which uh, made me raise and uh, uh, look for answers uh, to the question, what am I doing? Why am I doing this? Under the socialist regime, as well as uh, today under the capitalist regime, very cynical and uh, lacking principles, one should uh, continue struggling to develop uh, one's architectural skills in order to do well one's job. Uh, so in order to conduct a reconstruction of a, of a building, one needs uh, to have particular skills uh, so that reconstruction does not uh, make fade away uh, the image of the author. Well, 
school. So when uh, in uh, Kiev Construction Bureau, I uh, was promoted uh, at some point in time uh, to uh, the position of uh, uh, head of uh, workshop. Uh, I had uh, 11 teams uh, under my leadership. Uh, and uh, it was quite complicated uh, uh, to manage uh, so many teams uh, because uh, it was very um, not homogeneous, very much not homogeneous. So we, there were some uh, well-known and uh, um, reputed uh, uh, architects uh, working under my um, leadership. So, in order to make things uh, move smoother, uh, we set up a sort of uh, council of uh, uh, heads of departments, of heads of uh, um, workshops, uh, and uh, we uh, rethought uh, our economic uh, model in the sense that we uh, started uh, um, taken uh, orders uh, directly. Uh, so it brought um, some uh, good results. I can remember one month when I, my salary exceeded several times uh, the salary of uh, Mikhail Gorbachev. So due to such uh, economic con activities uh, that we conducted, we managed to um, accumulate uh, certain uh, funds uh, which allowed us to um, work more or less uh, without problems uh, and uh, without uh, being concerned about the financial uh, aspect of uh, our activities so we could deal with uh, really interesting projects. And at some point in time, uh, it became uh, a bit uh, too calm, and uh, I moved to another position. So I left my uh, current position, and I moved uh, to a so-called gap. Uh, so here my scope uh, of uh, activities uh, was uh, slightly different and uh, the way the work was arranged was different from the uh, Kiev Construction Bureau. So there were special uh, departments uh, which were responsible, which, which bore uh, full responsibility uh, for the construction projects, uh, including administrative uh, liability and criminal liability. So when I moved there, I received um, an architectural object to deal with. Uh, there were quite a lot of problems relating to this architectural um, object, uh, some uh, um, encumbrances, uh, some uh, prohibitions imposed uh, uh, by uh, certifying authorities. So it was a six-store building whose construction was frozen because of these encumbrances uh, and uh, prohibitions. I was quite young at that time, and uh, my team was composed of young people, and uh, uh, we were uh, trying uh, to build up some, some something new, uh, even though we understood that there was a need uh, to fit into the context. Uh, but uh, in the meantime, uh, we also um, believed uh, that fitting into the context uh, did not necessarily mean uh, just repeating what has been created before us. So, we were inspired uh, by uh, the neighboring uh, buildings, uh, but uh, the majority of uh, construction works uh, we conducted at that time reflected uh, our vision. This is a phenomenon which 
need uh, to be um, explored because uh, there are advantages and uh, disadvantages in each uh, epoch uh, and uh, one need to be able to pick up uh, uh, positive uh, things from um, any uh, epoch. Uh, by the way, Ruslan Kuharenko uh, one of, of uh, historians of um, uh, architecture believed uh, that uh, everything wa which was built uh, between 1917 was good. Uh, I can remember my uh, conversation uh, with him um, on, on, the, on this topic and I told him that uh, uh, his opinion uh, sounded a bit uh, weird because uh, could be understood if he were born before the revolution and uh, if he were um, just uh, conducting the, uh, the uh, pre-revolutionary lifestyle in his everyday life. But uh, it was not true. He was quite a modern uh, person who enjoyed uh, contemporary goods uh, and uh, uh, benefits. So. Uh, Coming back to uh, uh, Nabirzhna Logavaya, at that time uh, there was a river port uh, and uh, ships uh, uh, with cargo uh, would um, come to this uh, river port uh, and uh, um, there was, it was very noisy, uh, their uh, trucks uh, would come uh, to um, reload uh, cargoes uh, from ships uh, to, to trucks. So again, uh, ancient buildings uh, does not necessarily mean that they are good. Uh, and I also can remember myself living on Shotaru Stavele Street. Uh, uh, the ventilation was uh, organized in a very uh, particular way. It would not uh, let in uh, cold uh, air. Uh, from outside, but in the meantime, it would ensure ventilation. Uh, so uh, we would uh, use uh, this construction of this of the house on uh, Shataru Stavele uh, when developing uh, our project uh, and uh, uh, the um, commission, which would that was checking uh, our. Uh, construction uh, would accept uh, such a ventilation system because uh, it was it was a working uh, solution. So that's how uh, we managed to uh, overcome this uh, problem with the excessive uh, dust uh, coming into um, into the house. We also suggested uh, to uh, make the uh, ground floor a non-residential uh, area, even though uh, there were um, a lot of, uh, of candidates, a lot of uh, people who were willing uh, to uh, dwell in. But all in all, uh, our suggestion was accepted uh, and uh, it was indeed turned into a non-residential uh, uh, part uh, of the building and um, finally um, offices uh, uh, just were uh, organized uh, on the uh, ground floor. And by the way, um, I also worked in one of the offices in that building but then for some time I left uh, to Germany and when I came back that office was uh, taken away from us. So the construction uh, was uh, um, ordered uh, by several uh, institutions, uh, including the Ministry of Interior, Interior and uh, some uh, student uh, organizations. Um, all in all, the uh, quality of the building turned out to be uh, very poor, even though some solutions uh, are still viable. Everything, uh, 
там же столб стоит еще, который поддерживает террасу, иначе бы она упала. Остеклить ее, это дало дополнительное летнее помещение в маленьких советских квартирках, сделанных строго по СНИПу, где можно там летом даже сушить белье или поставить коляску с ребенком, или сделать веранду, где можно просто чай пить. И этот, этот прием, в общем-то, он характерный для Киева периода до 1980 года, до Олимпиады. Таких домов с такими-то летними остекленными верандами, террасами на дворовых фасадах киевских домов в кварталах, которые примыкали к Щекорице, было очень много. And, uh, is what you can find in other cities of Ukraine, such as Kamenets, Podolsky, and even in Bulgaria. So there's different ways to interpret history. You can reconstruct the details. You can interpret what you see, whether it was constructed by some amateurs or professionals. So you do your analysis to measure this, to interpret it in a context and apply the same solutions even today in line with the regional specificities and other aspects. And that is a good thing, I think. If there are any questions, I am open to them. You can always catch me later but anyway we analyze continuously what what happens in the construction and in the neighboring fields I had a very interesting conversation with one of the architects today about the pressure from the businesses from the clients how they are trying to squeeze out whatever they can out of the architect And so if you try to understand what the client wants and if you help them transform it into a well-informed concept, be it part of the social architecture, a public space, what have you, and if you let those businesses make profit, there you have your architecture. And many great architects you used to say that architecture is not just about art, it's also about politics and economy, and I agree with them. So there's a lot to think about. Thank you. Anton, I think there was a question, yes, about the practical aspects of your work, about how it is different from what's being done elsewhere, about the tra tra traditions and about your project. So there was a video demonstrated to the audience, right? And so I work for the company that did that project and we actually won a competition. It was a closed bid and um, it is one of the projects essentially that refers to the same building made by the same company. So we designed the master plan and then for the for the overall ter territory then went into smaller pieces but the client didn't like it at all they said that guys it's taking too long so let's have us that typical design and we were young it was a first project of that kind so we weren't able to adjust and we went the way we thought was best fit. Regarding what we do and how we are different from others, really no offense meant, but I can't really say that we anticipate stuff, even though we do somehow we pioneer many things and uh, I'm afraid 
that integrity is not something that you come across that often, but we have integrity. And I know that some of the fellow projects, they in Kiev, they sometimes build something that is not attributable really to any period in time. And I believe that architecture is about being related to time, to space, and there has to be integrity. As the architect, you're telling a story about the times you're living in. And I hope that someday the buildings that I design will be looked at from this perspective. Thank you. Okay, so we talked about the fabric of Badil. Was your effort somehow referencing it or did it have some other background? Yes, we borrowed a bit from how the districts were arranged in Padil because by the time we started working on our project, there was already the project known as Kiev City, designed in 2007 or 2008, I believe, when the real estate was skyrocketing in prices several thousands of dollars per square meter. So there was this project of a business center with 3 million square meters comprising both business and residential premises for 50,000 occupants all in all. And so when they built the transport model, it turned out that it would take six hours for the employees to travel to work and then six hours back. And so our idea was first to explain to the client that this concept that they call KF City should be realistic and it wasn't in its current design. And then the density had to be adjusted and other tools and methodologies had to be employed. Hence, the district model that we borrowed just a few words to explain the context in Kiev. Say a new building is being built or a set of buildings comprising what we call a residential complex. Usually it has no fencing as the architects, uh, architects see it, but then when the first residents come in, their first meeting votes, uh, the meeting of that condominium, they vote for the construction of a fence. And so what you have as a result is like clusters of buildings that are isolated from the rest of the city by those fences. And those blocks, those districts that we use are a way for us to kind of combat that tendency. That is why we offer the that kind of enclosure with the courtyard. So it is next to the road. It is protected from the road, yet it is open, such as, for example, in Padil that is densely uh, populated and has de and has a busy car traffic. And I know that businesses are encouraged to occupy the first floors, for example, and so on. First of all, thank you for having me. And I am happy to see Volodya, whom I haven't seen for a long time. We went to the same art shop, different years. He was a year senior. And so the reason I'm mentioning it is because we know that before you bid in a tender, you have to go to school. And we have two schools for architects, the first one being Kisi and the other one being the Institute of Arts. So Volodya and I, we went to the latter, and we always thought that the Construction Institute really uh, sucks, sorry for the language, but this is what we thought because our institute had 50 and today it's even 36 alumni only 
And we were so proud of, of it that it's not thousands of alumni, but it is something that is very rarely, something that you rarely come across. It just made me think of this thing that we have in common with Volodya. So we also went to the same art shop where, unlike the 360 students that Kisi teaches at the same time, at the art shop, the artists are trained individually, and then they are mentored by their professor for a few years after that. So we had a, a woman architect teaching us know that, so there is no gender discrimination here. She was uh, so cool, probably one of the coolest architects even compared to men. So I'm not sure if you have visited this as a site, but if you didn't, you should definitely make some time to visit it. Natalia always uh, Natalia said that architecture is a process. And so in 1936, as a student, she won a contest with her teacher. So it was before the Second World War. They continued working on it even after the war. And even when I was a student, for 12 more years, she was engaged. So she was 64 at that time, and I believe that she is a rare phenomenon. So when, when she spent so much time on the object, no matter the leadership in the country, other arrangements, so to her last day, no one could even repaint an office without her approval. So like I said, she was a rare case. I don't remember why I started talking about her, but she was a gem. So back to our shop, like I said, we didn't have that many students there. And uh, Volodya was just uh, saying that in the Soviet times, you could just come to work and do nothing. I didn't work for Kiev Project at that time. I worked for a different organization, a big institution with an R&D department. The, their own logistics and facilities available. And so 40 years ago, they would uh, produce uh, transmission devices working in helium, and I know that they still do. So for big institutes, it was common to have up to 2,000 employees. It's a huge body of staff, difficult to manage at times, and not making that much in terms of pay. And uh, Valodya mentioned something about botched jobs and botched, um, or rather something that you do not so much to botch something, but rather to make some side money as an architect. So I myself would travel to Sarata, for example, make a quick design for a trade fair, and I would bring back with me some down payment, and everyone at my institute would just sit and wait for me and uh, to bring that money. And then in a month, we would complete the job and get paid more than our management. But it was in those old days. Today, it's different. Again, I don't remember why I started reminiscing about this, but OK, I had a question for you about the continuity and about the things that we inherit. 
So about that school you went to, anything that translated into what you do. Okay, well, compared to the institute for uh, the construction institutes, uh, where the architects uh, architects get their training together with plumbers, for example, and other professions, in the art school, it's all different. They train their architects together with the sculptors, with other artists. So it's a whole different environment. And truth be told, good architects come out from both schools. So when I'm uh, saying all these things about the Construction Institute, you should keep in mind that I'm saying things. Uh, and um, the traditions continue, luckily, and the good architects graduate. OK, thank you. Next round, I guess. Our next round will be about the context and how it evolves and how it influences the architecture. If there's any influence to be mentioned, including in, including in terms of economy and other aspects. So some reflections from you about the context, how you define it, and how you define its role in what you do. Because today, just like back in the 80s, there is some context, but it must be different somehow. All right, here's the thing. Context, I believe, is something that has two elements essentially. On the one hand, there's something emotional about it. On the other hand, there's some math that you can do, something that you can, you can measure, such as that building on the, at the riverfront and the coal storage next to it and some of other old Soviet buildings. At the same time, the, cli the climate, the protection from the noise and the dust and so on, it all has to be taken into account. And if you look at Padil, Padil especially uh, before 1980, and we know that a lot of those buildings, they were just demolished to prove something about this socialist city. In its and its beauty. So anyway, all of that influenced the decision making. I mean, both emotionally and rationally. In terms of the aggression experienced from the environment, and so same as Alenik and his team, we based our project on that of Padil before the fire of, I believe, it was of uh, the fire in 1814. So anyway, it was this old part of the town. There was no, there had been no plan initially. And this um, octagon network was also tilted at an angle. And there were some food paths, not just uh, made by the humans, but also some animal tracks. So all of that had to be managed somehow. And the district had also some features that we had to integrate into our project to ensure that there is this enclosure and protection from the road, from the dust, from the noise. And we know that in many old buildings of Kiev, angles were quite often stressed. <clears throat> I have a very mixed feelings about this because uh, um, there were uh, so many 
uh, reconstructions uh, around this building that it can hardly be uh, put forward uh, as an example of uh, a good construction efforts. Uh, eight years after the construction of the building, uh, Ruslan Kucharenko acknowledged that despite uh, all the above, uh, the uh, building managed to become integral part of uh, Padil landscape. Um, so you can imagine that uh, um, hearing such a compliment from Ruslan Kucharenko, who admired uh, the architecture of uh, pre-revolutionary uh, time, uh, was a, uh, an important display of recognition. So uh, the building uh, was uh, a uh, six-store uh, building, and it continues being so. Uh, currently, uh, the central uh, part of a round shape uh, serves uh, as a food court, which can, which is uh, free uh, to be attended by anybody. One of the attempts uh, uh, to, as one of the attempts uh, to solve the issue of reconstruction uh, of old buildings, uh, this example uh, can be followed. Uh, so the uh, some some features uh, can also be uh, taken and uh, pasted from the construction of this building in including those uh, for uh, fire security. Uh, besides uh, what needs to be taken into account, um, that if we uh, compared approaches uh, to um, workcraft in the beginning of 20th century and uh, uh, in later epochs, there was a shift uh, towards uh, industrialized uh, um, construction, so the respective uh, techniques uh, uh, were applied uh, and uh, uh, the bricks were laid uh, in a manner which was uh, particular to, uh, um, to a more industrialized uh, period. So with the uh, uh, very uh, careful attention to modern and industrial um, requirements. Uh, we, however, tried uh, to uh, preserve the historical uh, spirit. I cannot say that we succeeded fully, however, um, some success uh, was achieved uh, in terms of um, windows uh, reconstruction, preserving the the the, the size uh, um, of the windows against uh, the uh, height of uh, ceilings of, uh, of of floors. So all in all, we did our best uh, to preserve to uh, the maximum extent uh, what could be preserved from the uh, past years. I personally like this building very much. Uh, uh, the portal is very nice uh, and uh, um, I strongly recommend you to uh, attend uh, this uh, building if uh, possible. It is uh, named uh, Kol. It is uh, located uh, on uh, on the corner of Raiderska Street. I attend this. I uh, basically uh, pass by this uh, building on almost on a daily basis. And besides, uh, the uh, building was uh, reconstructed uh, uh, by 
uh, by the student uh, of um, Volodymyr, and I personally believe that the, the reconstruction was uh, conducted in a quite uh, good uh, manner. Uh, Volodymyr is not uh, that happy uh, with uh, what his uh, student did, uh, but uh, actually we can go there all together and uh, make a um, joint assessment. Uh, by the way, in early 1990s, uh, when we left that big organization where we worked together, the one which counted uh, 2,000 employees, uh, the following happened. I'm, I'm sorry, I need to uh, interrupt myself here. Um, when we worked there in that big uh, um, organization, uh, we have uh, the whole uh, department uh, dealing with calculations. So when we left, uh, we managed to take with us uh, some 30 people from that department. There was uh, um, one guy, uh, Yevhen Dakutin, there. Uh, he's not um, in the profession. Uh, anymore. Uh, however, he came up uh, with a, a project uh, uh, which um, allowed uh, um, easily making uh, calculations uh, when constructing buildings uh, um, depending on the demographic situation and uh, uh, depending on um, on the um, fluctuations in number of population in a particular um, a residential unit. Uh, so we would uh, travel across uh, former Soviet Union and uh, uh, we would apply this scheme in various cities uh, and towns, making calculations uh, for building of uh, uh, residential blocks and residential uh, complexes, but then uh, the Soviet Union collapsed, uh, and uh, we could not continue such practices anymore. Uh, thank you. Unfortunately, I didn't mention to um, take uh, away anything uh, with me. I would want uh, maybe to um, to have uh, uh, some professional guys uh, or a computer, but everything was taken away before me. Mm, so from my perspective, I can say the following. The uh, architecture is very imminent. Uh, it uh, uh, reflects uh, uh, various aspects uh, of uh, environment, and it uh, bears uh, various uh, features, uh, uh, historical, uh, social, and others. What currently happens in Ukraine is uh, uh, the um, just uh, um, pre oppression uh, of the market, from the market. Um, currently, uh, developers uh, build uh, residential complexes. And uh, this is it. Uh, because of the peculiarities uh, of um, economic situation in Ukraine with uh, no private pension funds, uh, with uh, no um, other uh, means uh, um, or uh, places uh, to invest money, uh, money is invested uh, in uh, real estate. Uh, I understand that architectures uh, would want people to invest in the architecture, but what happens in reality is investing into the uh, real estate. Besides, uh, more and more people are coming to the capital, so people need uh, places uh, to live, uh, so that's why they there is uh, uh, demand uh, and uh, demand uh, brings about even greater proposal. I think we may continue.
Should there be any other comments regarding the context? I have a question to uh, Mr. Oleinik. Um, so imagine we build uh, a new context, a uh, new Kiev uh, with uh, a commercial, residential uh, complexes, sort of ghettos uh, for uh, wealthy uh, people. Uh, so what do you think, uh, what will be the impact uh, on uh, architecture in 30, 40 year perspective? What do you think? A very good question. So in, in the first place, one need uh, to understand uh, why it happens this way. Um, so the better Kiev, better Kiev becomes uh, more people uh, come to Kiev. Uh, and uh, in the meantime, it works uh, in the opposite way around. Uh, uh, worse is life in other cities and towns of Ukraine, which are not Kiev. Uh, more people are willing to move to Kiev. Uh, Kiev uh, is uh, less, less uh, has um, less dense uh, um, architectural landscape uh, compared to other European cities, but uh, I fully share your concern. I fully agree uh, that construction cannot be chaotic and uh, one cannot uh, continue abusing um, the, uh, the the construction uh, standards. Uh, um, let us only compare the following uh, numbers. Uh, uh, some 1.5 uh, million square meters of residential um, areas uh, was uh, constructed in Kiev uh, over the 30 years of independence, but the um, figure is much lower if we look at schools, uh, the situation is slightly better with uh, kindergartens. Uh, so, um, in a nutshell, um, residential um, areas uh, are uh, developing, but uh, uh, the infrastructure remains from Soviet times, um, and it's something that we need to um, pay close attention to. Uh, by the way, um, I have something to add here. Uh, so Kiev uh, is divided into the right bank uh, and uh, the left bank. Uh, the right bank uh, is considered to be a city in in a full fledged uh, city, and uh, the left bank uh, would be considered as uh, um, as like uh, uh, not city in, uh, in the full meaning of this world uh, word uh, and I can remember when I was uh, um, riding Metro at the time when I was riding Metro I one could hear um, the following conversation in a, in a metro car uh, people would ask one uh, each other are you going back home? So they would refer to the left bank as uh, um, as as their home, as the opposite uh, to uh, the right bank. Uh, um, in the meantime, uh, uh, construction uh, development in the uh, left bank uh, remains very rudimentary. Uh, so everything which is uh, um, cultural um, aspect of life is concentrated on the right bank. Okay, thank you. Uh, let us make another um, circle among the panelists uh, and then uh, the floor will go uh, to the audience uh, for questions. Um, so open professionals uh, and uh, non uh, professionals uh, 
who are concerned by a particular uh, project uh, form basically the audience of such uh, construction uh, projects. Uh, so can we uh, maybe uh, analyze the composition of, uh, of, of this uh, audience um, nowadays uh, against uh, the composition of, of this audience, uh, of this community in back in 1980s? Uh, uh, what are the processes uh, and happening inside these communities? And it's a very interesting question indeed. Uh, in order to um, launch uh, a construction of a nine-store building, some 23 professionals uh, uh, need to be engaged, uh, uh, provided it comes uh, to a very um, simple uh, construction uh, with uh, no complications uh, relating to soil, uh, peculiarities of soil uh, or other uh, problems. Uh, however, under the um, market uh, in the market relations, uh, we, we, which underline uh, um, our uh, work uh, today, one can hardly comply with its requirements, uh, which used to be respected under the uh, Soviet time. Uh, back in time, uh, so the uh, uh, problems uh, which might uh, occur uh, were detected uh, in advance. Uh, well, uh, now it is uh, quite encumbrant for an architect, an owner of an architectural bureau, uh, to uh, hire on constant uh, basis uh, engineers and professionals uh, who uh, may, who, who, are, who are able uh, to make necessary calculations and uh, predict uh, problems because uh, architects uh, earn money at this stage of uh, implementation of the project. Um, And basically, this is the, the this is the reason. Uh, this financial aspect is the reason of why uh, some good architects and uh, architectural um, companies, uh, which uh, started uh, uh, very well, ended up as uh, as, as a conveyor, ba basically. Uh, so, if we look back uh, into um, Soviet. Uh, um, Epoch, as I said, uh, uh, the amount of salary has no uh, direct uh, correlation uh, with uh, the quality of, uh, of, of job or um, of a workload. That's why uh, people were not so much uh, concerned uh, with uh, earning money, but uh, they were uh, making art. Uh, and uh, for instance, uh, this uh, hotel uh, salute, uh, which is located near Arsenalna uh, metro station, uh, the architect uh, who ended up uh, basically uh, completing uh, this project was working in some uh, far away uh, village, uh, so he was. Uh, uh, Partly engage, partly uh, working as an architect, and uh, partly doing uh, his his uh, job in uh, in um, uh, this community uh, farm, and uh, finally, when he moved uh, to Kiev, and uh, when he got this opportunity to work in our construction uh, bureau, he got so inspired that he applied. Uh, all his creativity and uh, all his uh, efforts uh, uh, to create what he finally uh, created. So people just would have uh, time for creativity. I don't know uh, whether it is possible uh, to turn back time and uh, go back to this creativity now nowadays. It might be possible for some uh, uh, huge architectural uh, companies uh, having a lot of uh, 
uh, routine uh, orders and uh, being able to uh, afford uh, engage in creativity. Um, of course, it was not um, ideal. It was not uh, uh, perfect. Even in the past, there were problems. People would leave because they would be dissatisfied and unhappy with the working uh, conditions, with the remuneration, etc. But uh, there was a team, and uh, uh, any success uh, was shared among team members. I thought the question was about something else, about the community in a broader sense of the word, not just as the team of the project, but all the other stakeholders as well, and the community that is engaged to some extent, some activists, human rights advocates, and some uh, foundations and other organizations. There is a town called Ukrainka, 35 kilometers away from Kiev. This is where I would hold my summer school for the students. So I would have my students who came to the camp go about the city. Interviewing the residents. And so we designed a list of what people wanted, a list of their expectations, and it turned out that they wanted different things. Someone who works in Kiev wants just to come home and walk barefoot. They are not expecting any hotels or any active city life. But those who live there permanently, they want cultural events, some social activities. They want this kind of engagement. And so we tried to design our suggestions for the how the town, town could develop. And we even made this model that we put for everyone to see. And people could even see their houses. They could find it in that model. And they were so happy, just like children. It was a whole discovery for them that their hometown can be can look like that. And they didn't even realize that their waterfront was the largest if you take the per capita rate and compare it with other cities of Ukraine. So unfortunately we weren't able to operationalize the project but and we had this idea that if everyone would every everyone would just come uh, and hold hands so they would make this life circle but it, it never became uh, this was never fulfilled and so people would come and see some original works of art they never visit museums just routinely even though the town is not that far away from the cultural life so we would take different um, pieces of art such as the paintings that you can see here for example we would bring it uh, to them as exhibits we would do fashion shows right there at the waterfront and everyone would be surprised like who 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 are all these people but the end was sad i'm afraid the mayor left and everyone would fight each other uh, uh, damage each other's cars and do awful things like that Okay, what a great community. For our international guests, let me just explain that a Ukrainian architect as a practitioner has to keep in mind that the local community 
no matter the project it includes the experts the businesses the authorities and just the people usually businesses and the people are the same elsewhere but not in ukraine somehow in ukraine it is just completely the opposite the business is something bad and people are good or the other way around depending on the angle and so what about the architect whenever the city uh, puts up a project for a contest the main actor is the community if it is if it's something commercial then usually they would have their own specificity including the vote that the client has in the final say but it's still in flux and for example in Kramatorsk we have this project a few uh, not that far away from the front line and uh, the community is great in terms of the context it used to be a district well it is still a district it is just half built and people the locals call it Chernobyl because it was built in 1986 and this is where a lot of people would move and so the, this part of the district is called Chechnya because in the 90s a lot of the, the events there were associated with the war in Chechnya and so it was like Chechnya in the middle of Chernobyl and now we are working with these people and turns out there are a lot of locals who are very active very engaged it wasn't even a requirement engaging the community but then somehow it turned out that they're willing to engage via Facebook via other communication channels and so they contact us for example on Facebook with their suggestions or even requests for example their the biking or cycling community they were very active and they would advocate for the bike lanes to be integrated in the overall outline of the city and they managed to do it and it's a great case I believe when people would reach out and would tell us what they want and we would make it part of the project thank you and thank you for letting us take a peek into your workshop so to say if anyone has any questions maybe from this morning today or from the excursion that we had hello I have a question and it's a question to all of our speakers and you Natalia so my question is about the community but about the professional community the so-called architectural youth no matter their age but just a community that is brought together by their profession do you believe yourself to be part of the community do you wear black do you read books about philosophy things like that Oh, let me try to answer this one you're referring to the book right why do architects wear black yeah I know there is this book it's a great book by the way about the architectural community I think it's 300 pages or something and it contains the bits and pieces of the interviews with the famous world architects and everyone is asked the same question how come do you guys all wear black and they give their answers so essentially this is what the book is about and those answers give us some insights 
into whether we have uh, a community of architects and to what extent. I cannot say that we are a powerful one even in Kiev, at least in Kiev. I know that uh, the Dnipro community is stronger, for example. They keep in touch all the time. They have, have all sorts of discussions. They know each other, the older, the younger architects. Everyone feels uh, associated with uh, this community, but not in Kiev, probably because we have more architects here, like a thousand of architects currently, and it's very difficult to just get together when we're that many. So we're not engaged in direct communication, at least from my subjective point of view. Maybe my colleagues here would have a different opinion. But anyway, I should say that I know I am personally familiar with uh, the architects of my generation. I know a few of those who are older than me, and I hardly know anyone who's younger. But again, this is just me, and it could be my story only. Let me just add to that, that if you take a community as, uh, if you take a professional community, like uh, Victor did, for example, and said that it is purely within the mandate of the Union of Architects, but somehow he manages it uh, much better than those guys do. But speaking of communities in general, I am very uh, careful with that concept. Same as with the sports arenas, for example. I like it for the energy, but if then if you put a hundred thousand people, if you bring them together, somehow they turn into this dumb crowd that is very easy to manage, very, very gullible. So this is the reason, by the way, why I don't like those academic councils, 30 or even 60 people brought together. If you take them as individuals, they are smart, they're bright, they're talented, but as soon as they uh, come together as a council or as a board, they just start talking nonsense. That is why my vote is for the community of 10 people, I don't know, three people. One is my perfect community, just a community of your own, if you manage to have a consensus, that is. But speaking for other cities, I would probably also mention Lviv. They are a successful community, a well-developing one, including with the help of their union, local union of architects. Then they have this skiff festival, the Quadriennale of scenography. And then in Kaniv, they just wrapped up their, their sculpture symposium. And it was a first time ever that they would hold a contest, a contest for the critics. They would have those junior uh, art experts walk around, evaluate, and then write articles. And that is how they held that contact, contest. So. We need critics as well. We need someone to evaluate, to give feedback, because in Kyiv, we have none. I mean, we do not have a, a community of critics. Just this past Sunday, I attended that symposium, and can you imagine that people would even publish a paper, very uh, smart one. I think that it's a great symptom. It is something that we desperately needed. Maybe that is why we don't have the community, because we have no critics and no criticism. But it is an essential element, I believe. Then again, speaking about the professional communities, something that Kiev is uh, lacking, the contests, the competitions, 
When you have none, you have no critics, you have no criticism, unless you have competition. Even if we have some bids, they're usually something closed where uh, the client knows everyone already, so it's just a formality. If you have open competitions, it's okay to have something closed, but given the scarcity of the former, I'm not sure that it's a good idea. And then we have entire districts in Kiev designed without a contest. I'm, I'm sure that the designs would have been much better if they had those contests, even if there had been some arguments and fights even. Like back in the Soviet Union, we used to have that even closer to the break down of the USSR. I mean, people would get together and they would debate. And those debates uh, sometimes could be very much heated. Unlike today, what they talk about is those offshores that they have and that their wives have. And that's it. Not like in the old days. And I would say that we need this um, vitality, if you will, Maybe the town planning council, even though I, I know that not everyone is a fan of that concept, but still, there could be different circumstances, even if you have been paid to say some nice things about something that is of very poor quality. Everyone would see immediately that you're doing this for money but it would be up to you whether to engage in this kind of affairs. But we don't have a body like that at all, and I don't think it's good for the city. I could add to that as well, quite confidently, that we do not have an architectural community in Kiev, and we should all look into the reasons for that. I do have some ideas. But first, we need to understand whether we need that community. I mean, I'm not sure that I do. Probably I don't anymore. I'm like Anton here. I know my peers, people of the same age, maybe some people who are older than me. I mean, someone who's younger, I still know some of them, but those guys who are older than me, some of them are already uh, gone. So here and there, someone that I know, but we don't have a community per se. And there's this gap, the generation gap that is clearly visible in politics. It's also visible in our field. We've all been through the 90s, through the very beginning of the 2000s, and that then there was this gap across all fields, including architecture. So this gap that sometimes happens in demographics as well, it happened in architecture. It was a dark period of our history. I mean, when the Soviet Union managed to build something, they would pay the architects, and then suddenly we became a free market, and people started debating whether we need the union of architects, up to the point when it was completely discredited something that is merely a red tape buddy, barely staying afloat, but they are still recognized by the international community and they have their status, which is a lot. And it would be great if one could fill this form with uh, some uh, content communications, uh, which is needed uh, 
by the professionals rather than by myself uh, as uh, the head of the Union of Architects. It is needed by the younger generation of uh, architects uh, as uh, having uh, this body uh, would um, allow um, tackling uh, various uh, problems uh, of uh, uh, common nature and some individual problems and w even when it comes uh, to individual problems it is always easier to deal with them um, altogether besides uh, it would give us a chance uh, to fill uh, this gap which exists uh, between generations but also between various parts of uh, professional uh, community throughout the country Uh, some um, organization or association can be built from scratch. It will take, though, take time uh, to gain uh, international uh, recognition. Uh, however, uh, such an organization can be uh, very uh, useful uh, for the national uh, community. And actually, it is something that needs to be done. And uh, um, communication uh, should be um, put um, on the first place uh, on the in the first uh, rank uh, um, competition um, sp competitive spirit need to be restored uh, through holding more competitions Mitro mentioned the lack of uh, professional um, competitions uh, even in big hubs in big uh, cities the setup of an organization uh, should uh, come from inside the community the community should self-organize it is no good uh, to wait for some uh, top-down solutions um, it will be for the benefit of this interesting, sometimes bloody profession. Uh, said that, uh, Vladimir said that uh, he didn't uh, need uh, um, a professional um, association. He personally uh, didn't need it. Uh, and I beg to differ. I personally is very much interested in having um, such an uh, association I would uh, suggest a two chamber uh, structure uh, some one chamber being composed uh, of um, um, permanent uh, team uh, of uh, architects uh, and the second one being composed uh, of uh, uh, contracted uh, uh, architects You know, a um, couple of months uh, ago, I attended uh, um, the uh, first uh, uh, demonstration uh, organized uh, by Arctic architects uh, ever in my life. Uh, the demonstration was uh, took place because of the draft law 5655, uh, uh, which uh, literally uh, deprives uh, the architects of uh, copyright uh, to, 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 to their designs. The uh, demonstration was uh, uh, quite massive. Uh, some additional um, requirements uh, were articulated alongside uh, the main um, the, the, the main uh, uh, proclamation. But again, it's, it was the first demonstration that I can remember uh, ever, and I believe it's it's it's, uh, it's positive. Uh, don't you think uh, that uh, some well-known developers uh, uh, may hinder uh, the process uh, of establishment of such association? Uh, let me please uh, add. Uh, 
few words here. I was misunderstood. I don't mean I didn't mean that uh, I didn't need uh, the association. Uh, what I was trying to say is that uh, uh, due to my age, I wouldn't uh, take much benefit uh, from this uh, association. But I truly believe uh, that uh, the association is needed by the community. And uh, from my side, I'm ready uh, to contribute as much as possible. And what I'm trying to say here is that you, as uh, representatives of a younger generation, need this association more than I do. Uh, it will also would also enhance uh, uh, your uh, professional uh, opportunities. For example, I have uh, clients uh, who would uh, um, address uh, to myself just because they don't know anybody else, just because they don't they know uh, me uh, very well. Um, By the way, uh, if uh, follow um, international example, I would suggest a Finnish example. So there is an association of architects uh, and uh, art shops uh, functioning on the uh, basis uh, of the um, association. Uh, so this art shops design, uh, art shops uh, uh, deal uh, with uh, some uh, practical issues, so they would engage in uh, in, in design uh, projects, uh, and uh, um, if uh, we look at the structure, um, uh, we can see that there is basically a two dimension. Uh, Two-dimensional structures of the uh, Union of Architects, the Association of, Ar of Architects, uh, uh, gives ideas uh, which uh, are implemented uh, by the uh, design art shops. Uh, basically, uh, if we look uh, at processes uh, which are happening around some public uh, spaces, uh, public uh, objects, uh, the community um, could uh, step in and uh, um, uh, just uh, raise uh, uh, their voice uh, and uh, um, come up with uh, uh, some opinion. Uh, I think this would, uh, so if the architects are able to speak in one voice in respect of uh, uh, certain uh, public projects, public design projects, public uh, spaces. Uh, it would also strengthen uh, their um, public uh, image and uh, uh, their uh, individual uh, themselves as individuals. Because currently, uh, it is said that uh, our architects, uh, at some point in time. Uh, of implementation of the projects, uh, uh, architects can hardly uh, make any decisions anymore. Natalia, you seem to uh, be willing to ask. Uh, thank you for such a lively discussion. I have uh, uh, two uh, questions, and I'm and uh, they go as follows. Uh, so, uh, you uh, as uh, uh, architects uh, are. Um, remain involved uh, with the uh, are supposed to be uh, in, uh, to remain included in the projects uh, after they are uh, completed and uh, you mentioned uh, uh, Natalia who was um, overseeing uh, her design projects uh, until her death uh, for more than 64 years so my question is uh, uh, whether you um, um, hold uh, uh, or provide uh, such uh, oversight and my second question is uh, uh, what uh, so the the houses the buildings uh, you live in uh, when were they uh, built and uh, by whom um, I personally uh, live uh, in a very typical um, residential building uh, um, example of uh, um, Soviet uh, modernism. 
however, it has uh, one huge advantage uh, uh, view uh, from um, from the window windows. Um, uh, I see San Sofia. Uh, Andreevsky descent, uh, St. Andrew's descent, uh, and uh, when the weather is good, I can see uh, Vishgorod, uh, the town of Vishgorod, uh, city satellite of Kiev. Um, and uh, speaking of uh, my uh, workshop, uh, it is uh, located in the downtown uh, town, uh, but uh, the uh, authorship is uh, um, uh, argued. Uh, and could you please remind the first question, please? Uh, so whether we uh, oversee our uh, design projects uh, after their completion. Um, the fact is uh, that um, with some clients, uh, we have uh, been working uh, for uh, 30 years uh, uh, and uh, we witnessed the life story of, of these uh, people, all their divorces and, uh, um, and other uh, peculiarities of their private lives. Uh, so uh, we um, received uh, uh, multiple orders uh, uh, from them um, during the, uh, the, the, the lifetime of our, our cooperation. Uh, however, it is at times uh, quite difficult uh, to um, oversee uh, design projects uh, um, just uh, because uh, one can literally um, not have access uh, to it. Uh, in the meantime, um, we have uh, very close uh, relations uh, with our long-term uh, clients. It's uh, like a family uh, therapist uh, or um, other professional who is remains by your side uh, for very long periods of time. Uh, so speaking of uh, the oversight of uh, our uh, projects and uh, uh, relations with people who own uh, these buildings or architectural objects. Unfortunately, uh, Ukrainian uh, line regulations are uh, of very declarative nature, so they declare uh, many things uh, which do not happen in reality. For instance, uh, the law says uh, that uh, uh, the author of the project uh, owns uh, copyright and uh, uh, should uh, have uh, um, prevailing uh, right uh, to be engaged for uh, reconstruction or um, further development uh, of uh, an architectural object, uh, but it is what is written on paper. In reality, uh, the client um, almost never uh, respect uh, these uh, requirements. And uh, if there is uh, any collision, any um, conflict uh, it, uh, between the client uh, and the architect, it rarely draws uh, public attention. Uh, unlike uh, uh, the disputes uh, um, around copyright be between um, uh, Quartal 95 and Diesel Show, which are uh, just uh, uh, popular uh, showrunners on Ukrainian TV. Uh, it seems uh, that uh, these disputes between uh, showrunners uh, are of greater importance uh, for public uh, than uh, disputes um, uh, in the architectural um, area. So this is much um, field uh, for reflection and uh, efforts uh, to be applied by uh, the uh, professional community to change the state of play. Uh, 
so if we uh, look um, at uh, the uh, project uh, design uh, from the uh, standpoint uh, of, of of two uh, components, uh, process uh, and result. Uh, the process uh, um, usually uh, goes uh, not so well. For instance, I uh, had a, a situation uh, where the process uh, just uh, went uh, really bad. Uh, I would uh, uh, give advice uh, uh, which was uh, never uh, adhered so they uh, still followed uh, the client and the designer still uh, followed uh, uh, their line and, and their vision so if i were uh, properly um, involved uh, maybe it would uh, the result would be would be better and actually what we see here is the collision um on the border of uh, ethics uh, and uh, uh, aesthetics so the uh, uh, aesthetics uh, side let us leave it apart uh, but uh, from the ethical uh, standpoint it was a bad uh, uh, situation um Speaking of my um, house, uh, of, of my home place, uh, I live in a, a residential uh, building uh, which uh, was built uh, um, according to my uh, design project. It's a nice uh, building uh, with a nice view. Uh, I can see uh, the domes of uh, San Sofia from my uh, home uh, and uh, from of some other um, Kiev sites. So the residential building I live in is is quite nice. Uh, it won uh, the first prize uh, uh, on. Um, Soviet Union um, uh, competition. I have uh, documents uh, which confirm uh, the, the the house winning the first prize. So I wish everybody being able to construct a house and uh, to live there. You know, as uh, when we were uh, children. Uh, and uh, we were just uh, showing off, uh, um, speaking of our parents. And once my daughter uh, told to uh, her mates uh, who were showing off their parents, saying, my father is an engineer, my father is a uh, fireman, uh, she said, my father is the one who built this house. Uh, we are mostly uh, work uh, with the real estate with uh, um, commercial uh, real estate uh, and the uh, developers uh, wouldn't treat uh, those uh, who pay as inhabitants, uh, future inhabitants uh, of the uh, residential uh, complex, uh, but they treat them as investors. They call them investors and uh, the terminology matters here because uh, it has direct uh, impact uh, on on the attitude uh, and uh, in the further uh, perspective it also uh, brings about some peculiarities uh, for example um when uh, designing uh, an uh, a residential uh, complex uh, architects would usually not uh, uh, envisage uh, any fences around uh, the the residential complex. Uh, but the first thing uh, the uh, investors uh, do uh, once they manage to establish this uh, association of owners uh, of uh, apartments of of, of the, such a residential complex. Uh, uh, they make a decision uh, to build up a fence uh, and uh, in the meantime uh, when uh, there is uh, some something that uh, 
um, investors slash inhabitants uh, want to uh, discuss uh, with the architectural team, uh, it is rarely uh, possible to uh, come to, 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 to terms and uh, to find uh, some consensus, unfortunately. Uh, hopefully, uh, things uh, change in the future and there uh, will be greater communication between uh, uh, this uh, association of owners of condominiums and uh, uh, architectural teams. There was another question, I believe. Yes. I come from Minsk, so my question will be in Russian. Anyway, I would like us all to go back into 1980s, into mid-1980s. This is what my architectural background would cover. So as a, as, an, as a period in history, I'm just wondering what you think about this transition from one approach or one methodology, one style to something new. Because if you flip through the magazines of the 60s and the 70s and then the 80s, it appears as if there was this uh, sudden shift in the 80s. More density, if you will. Different functions come in uh, to the front line, different benchmarks, different ideas. We spoke quite a bit about context today, but I'm just wondering what is your source and what was your source of inspiration? Maybe those magazines or something else, someone saying that someone saying that the buildings should not be higher than five stories and they should reconcile with the historical heritage or maybe there was something else something associated with the international context thank you back to the ussr since we're on the period and to the institute this powerful architectural organization with a very solid R&D database and uh, facilities. They would design new constructions. They would go for new materials. All of that resulting in new experimental project. The Institute was of experimental design. They did have some standard projects, of course, and uh, you had to comply with certain requirements of steel consumption per square meter, for example, and the entire department would break their heads over how to um, have that alignment without sacrificing the essentials. At the same time, as Natalia would recollect, and if you take the Supreme Council building, that would be just uh, one example of one approach and the other buildings were completely different as if designed by someone else so i agree there was this transition i wouldn't say it was a, di a transition to a different style but to a different quality maybe yes if we look at the standards some of them applicable since 1963 and then we look at the buildings designed in 1975 I don't think the gap was that big I mean that transition was that apparent something happened in the 1980s I believe it was the inertia from the 1960s in terms of design in terms of applicability in terms of operationalization there's this 10 to 15 years gap just to see that difference uh, translating into something practical. And if you look at some of those designs in 1960s, they were phenomenal for, for their time. They were, weren't just uh, implemented, weren't fulfilled. 
Uh, I understand that the colleague here is not uh, very much keen on the Soviet Union, unlike us. But back in the day, everything was strictly regulated. The economy was about the savings, as Brezhnev always insisted. Some Sometimes it would take a very silly shape, like we had this famous designer coming to work for our department. He wasn't really engaged in our routines, but he would do some kind of calculations and then he would disappear for half a day and it turned out he was thinking and he was calculating how to reduce the amount of still steel in the standard uh, structures that was his job so first they would remove for example um, on the resting elements, then they would take out some of the steel framework to have all those crazy savings. The savings were later confirmed by the respective competent departments and institutions, and they would uh, award all those ridiculous bonuses for that. Someone would actually profit from it. and. Finally, he got an apartment for free in this new building and he was complaining about how awful it was. It made us all laugh, really. So he had to actually pay someone an additional amount to actually change that apartment for something in, the, in, in an older building. So that was his story. And then when I was young and I had all those aspirations to see things, to learn, every day after work we would go to this library on Rodninska Street, I think, yes, it was on Rodninska in front of the Holosiev Park. It took me 30 minutes to get there. It was open till 8, so I had roughly an hour. And there was just one architectural magazine, it was French, translated into Russian, coming to us from Moscow, probably. It was designed in blue and purple, as I remember, but it was our only source of information at that time. And then in the mid 80s, when we had more information, more freedom, after the concept of uh, glassness to free speech was advocated, we had access to other sources and uh, it was romanticized a, bi a bit, as if something new was appearing and we were happy as puppies to have that opportunity. So maybe just to elaborate a little bit, did you have any favorite role models, favorite architects? I understand that uh, not every Soviet architect uh, would be happy to say that ha that they were inspired and their creation were inspired by someone else, but like Rossi, for example. But what about you and your generation? We know that Rudolf was very famous here, but not in Europe. So there were all those shifts happening and all those bits of information that we would get from different sources and interpret modernism and postmodernism in our own way, our own way yes carbizia inspired quite a lot of us 
Paul Rudolph then Dobrovolsky coming back from Japan. For the first time in Ukraine, yes, that's true. And that wasn't his only contribution. I mean, he had some foreign currency and uh, he was subscribed to Japanese magazines and we would visit him and just look through those magazines. But the information was scarce, that's true. We have more access to information this today, but Carbusier and Kenzatanya, those who are a different generation of architects, I believe, and they are they just do not fit into a timeline. They more than that. They go beyond that. So postmodernity, what was it inspired by those projects? It was an attempt of a context based architectural project integrated into the reality. If you refer to it as, as postmodern, sure, you're within your rights. What about the Padil and the house in Padil? Well, we had to stick to the regulations and the limitations because, because of the history and the heritage. The landscape is a complex one, uh, difficult rhythm, reconciliation of the windows, I mean the glasses and other materials. It's not monotonous, it's uh, vibrant. And we had to take that into account. It's a bit archaic, archaic I agree. Well, that's great. It's a unique project in a way. Well, architects, sometimes, you know, what we design as architects is not so good. Other objects are great. So we're humans. And again, it all depends on how much leeway you have. I didn't have much of it back then because I had to work fast. I had um, a tight deadline and uh, I had to manage a team of contractors and just somehow negotiate. Their leader was Pyotr Petrushenko, by the way, who built this new wing of the National Arts Museum after the war. It used to have a different uh, shape, the L shape, before the war. I mean, this wing was built later. So anyway, I had to negotiate and make compromises. If it was just me starting from scratch, the result would have been something else. Probably, I mean, who knows? Hindsight, hindsight is, does not apply here, I believe. I could also add a little bit about the Soviet times. I was just, uh, uh, I just uh, had my oath as the pioneer, gave my oath as the pioneer, and then the Soviet Union collapsed. I don't have that much hands-on experience granted by but the change of the paradigm that shift towards post modernism it was at that time i believe at the time of the glasnost and all those changes because before that we were pretty closed as a society the soviet modernism was more about the future something that we we're all hopeful about. And then there was the shift towards agreeing with the context. You know, the windows would open, the doors would open to let something new in. So 
this uh, term, postmodernism term, and uh, someone referring to, to it as a simulacrum. That applies to architecture as well. And just to add to what Vladimir has said, architects rarely stick to a style. Usually, they do what they believe in at a certain period of time. And then when we get new information, we process it, we integrate it, and we respond. So this was the period, I believe, for processing and responding. Yes, Anton just tried to answer that question for me. And I will just add that I agree with him. But I do have a style as an architect. There was lots of instability at that time, historical, economical, different challenges, different solutions. And being in the middle of that chaos, you just had to look for a way to develop at least some kind of style, even if it weren't always accurately identifiable. I did have my tools. I did have my signature um, formulas. And then when the Soviet Union decided to abandon the classics and just go and move towards postmodernism. We didn't have a foundation to rely on per se, but we tried to find a vision to reinvent ourselves and our challenges, and it would yield different results every time. But if we're talking about a style, you need a stable uh, environment for that, a stable setting. We didn't have it, fortunately or unfortunately. We also had an architect, Pyotr Krasilnikov. He was all about style, and he used to say, using not using uh, the language that is not printable sometimes, but he used to say that we had to stick to his style, and he had this building facing Andreevska Church. And the, the wall, one of the walls was just completely solid. I'm not really a fan of, of postmodernism, just as a person. I don't see something that adds value in it. Whereas modernism is all about the added value. Regardless of what the Soviet Union did with this concept and how it applied it, killing some of the projects. So it was like European burp, so to say, something that is distorted and completely destroyed in a way, like those French factories. But if we're talking about the added value, if you have it, then it's architecture. If not, it's just construction. Thank you. Another question, do you think it's possible to somehow influence the change in um, the number of stories, the high-rise apartment buildings around the those uh, buildings that were built back in 1938 and their foundation is already uh, deteriorating should we stop it sure we can we can stop we can suspend whatever we need on the legislative level if there is willingness to do that if the people are ready which they are not today plus when you come to a medieval city so to say do you climb the bell tower yes i do why because of the view there's your answer 
So it all depends on the location because the high-rise buildings just as they are it is not something that you can stop as a process in its entirety but the question is where to build them to have the view that adds the value that's the question um, so having multi um, multi store uh, buildings uh, is uh, not uh, bad or uh, good uh, it's just a fact uh, everything depends on the right uh, location uh, but it can be easily stopped uh, answering to your question uh, the uh, kf city council should vote uh, respective regulation um, i personally do not believe that uh, doing this uh, is uh, an easy thing um, in other countries of the world, um, this issue is uh, regulated uh, through uh, zoning, uh, uh, through um, so the zone, like uh, the uh, area um, is uh, are uh, delineated uh, and. Uh, um, and uh, some constructions are allowed in a particular area and uh, some are not. Uh, so, um, coming back to um, your question. Uh, so, the fact is uh, that uh, when a developer um, buys uh, or uh, rents uh, uh, the uh, uh, the land plot. Uh, there is no uh, limitation uh, in uh, price uh, for uh, apartments uh, or other uh, real estate units which will be built uh, there. So they, from the very beginning, from from scratch, a developer uh, may um, decide uh, that the price uh, would be fifty thousand grivnas uh, per square meter. And this is how it works. Uh, if there is zoning, uh, then uh, or some area delineation, whatever uh, name you choose, uh, then uh, the uh, city council uh, may indicate uh, that the price in a particular area uh, cannot go beyond a uh, certain uh, amount. That's how it works uh, in New York. In New York, uh, the density of construction is extreme. Uh, however, uh, they uh, um, uh, take measures uh, to uh, delineate uh, areas uh, on Manhattan uh, many years ago, over one century uh, ago, and it works perfectly until today. I fully agree with what you said, uh, and uh, I can make uh, parallels uh, with Montenegro. It's a tiny country. Uh, really tiny with the uh, tiny economy uh, and uh, still uh, they manage uh, to regulate uh, um, construction in uh, uh, in, in, the, in the in the neighborhood uh, uh, in the neighborhoods uh, which are close uh, to the seashore uh, for example uh, in the first zone uh, which is uh, the closest uh, to the sea it is uh, forbidden to build a multi-story building. Uh, even more, uh, it is only allowed uh, to uh, construct uh, buildings uh, of uh, certain uh, in certain style uh, with uh, tile roofs uh, only. There are some exceptions, uh, but they are very very expensive for the developers, of course. Uh, besides, uh, there are. Uh, restrictions uh, re which are relating to uh, green belt uh, of a certain area for instance uh, if there is there is there is um, there are olive uh, trees uh, in the area where a developer wants uh, to make construction uh, such a developer will need uh, to uh, obtain a bunch of uh, additional uh, permissions uh, certificates uh, and uh, so on and so forth uh, so, um, my point is, uh, there are regulations uh, uh, which are respected, and uh, this is how they uh, manage uh, to um, restrain uh, construction in the areas uh, which are 
which should uh, remain um, without uh, multi-store um, buildings and, and so on and so forth. So uh, what we need to do in Kiev uh, is uh, to um, develop proper legislation and uh, bylaws. Uh, the development of a new master plan for Kiev uh, uh, have been uh, developed uh, uh, so around uh, there are discussions around the uh, development uh, of a master plan uh, for Kiev uh, which are taking place uh, for more than four years uh, however I don't think that we will have uh, a new master plan in somewhere in the nearest future because uh, the developers take benefit uh, of the chaos. Uh, they are uh, interested in the existing state of play where they can uh, just uh, purchase a land plot uh, uh, with uh, in, in the middle of a courtyard, uh, which uh, were previously uh, for um, garages uh, were located and build a multi-store building there. Again, um, the administrative, uh, state administrative authorities uh, uh, may uh, have a uh, vote uh, in, in, in this uh, uh, discussion, so they may uh, come up uh, with some additional uh, regulations uh, which would allow uh, to um, restrain uh, the um, number uh, of stores allowed in a particular area. Um, and those uh, who um, want uh, to make money, to make uh, easy and uh, fast uh, money, uh, their interests should be taken into account. We cannot uh, do without, we cannot uh, avoid it, so we need to suggest them. So if we hold uh, uh, such chaotic construction, we need to have something uh, to uh, suggest them, uh, some alternative, which also allows uh, uh, making money, fast money. Uh, such an alternative uh, uh, basically, tourism can be uh, such an alternative. Um, but again, uh, uh, the most and uh, foremost important uh, um, effort which needs to be applied is uh, the uh, development uh, of proper regulations uh, at both legislative and uh, um, second law, uh, second legis uh, and, and regulatory levels. Um, speaking of London, uh, the so the, in in the city of uh, London, they can uh, make uh, any constructions uh, they want because there is some historical um, background uh, to this uh, situation. Uh, so several centuries ago, King uh, Jacob uh, would uh, take money from uh, London bankers uh, for um, some uh, military uh, campaign. He would never return this money. and. Uh, uh, this is why uh, he uh, granted uh, self-governance uh, to uh, London bankers, uh, which translated uh, in the permission uh, to uh, build uh, whatever buildings uh, they want uh, in the city of uh, London. Uh, however, uh, they there are some uh, uh, restrictions. Uh, there are still some restrictions in place, uh, and uh, they do not 
allow uh, chaotic construction. Uh, Paris, uh, in Paris, they chose um, a, a, a different uh, path after having constructed uh, Tour de Montparnasse, uh, this uh, huge tour in the very uh, center uh, of the city. They realized uh, that the city landscape changes and they decided that uh, uh, from uh, since then, uh, all uh, multi-store constructions uh, should happen in the uh, defense uh, neighborhood in the in the area of La Defense. Uh, thank you, thank you for all of your answers. Uh, as we can see, uh, the discussion can uh, hardly be uh, completed naturally. There is. There are more and more things uh, to discuss. Uh, however, we need to make a halt here. Uh, I'm um, very uh, grateful to the panelists, uh, to the audience. Thank you for being so uh, proactive. Thank you for coming up with your questions. Let us make a break now and uh, continue after with the lecture.